Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. More on the trig functions related to the unit circle. Now we're going to be looking at common trig values. All right, we're almost towards the end of this video series. And this is a problem set involving radians. Now let's do a few reminders here, kind of review a little bit. When you look at the unit circle, for certain angles that you go around the circle, there might be a 30, 60, 90 triangle that's formed. All right, and if that happens, because it's a unit circle, hypotenuse is 1, then the long leg is radical 3 over 2, and the short leg is 1 half. All right, so you have to recognize that triangle shape. Or we might have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Again, the hypotenuse is the radius there, and that'll be 1. And both of these legs are the same. They're congruent, and they are radical 2 over 2. So when we apply that to the unit circle, again, kind of reviewing from previous videos, let's say we're looking at a 30 degree angle. Well, that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Notice how this point here is radical 3 over 2 and 1 half, all right? The cosine value is the long leg going across, and the sine value is the short leg going up and down, okay? So how do you remember that? Well, if it's a Radians measure of 6 or 3, notice how I've highlighted these in green, 6s and 3s, or 3rds and 6s, should remind you of 30, 60, 90. Okay, notice the 3 and the 6. So a little memory trick to remember that. Now it's, if it's 4ths, 4ths should remind you of 45, 45, 90. So whenever you have a 45 degree angle or some um, a configuration of that and you have a 45 45 90 triangle that will give you your radical 2 over 2 amounts alright let's look at some problem sets and figure this out again notice that at this angle here 7 pi over 4 which is almost a full rotation the four denominators should remind you of a 45 45 90 triangle so if I draw that out Okay, notice how that would have to be 45 degrees short of 360. You kind of have to go back and forth mentally between radians and degrees to kind of figure this out. So if that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we're looking at the sine value, that would be this leg right here. And since we're going to be going down in the negative direction, what would that be? Well, that's got to be a negative radical 2 over 2. Alright, now for the sine value of this one, 5 pi over 6, notice the 6 denominator. If it's sixths of a radian, that is going to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this has to be a 30 degree angle there. So therefore, the sine value now is a positive short leg of that uh, triangle. So that's got to be a positive 1 half. Alright, let's check our answers and see how we did. Yep negative radical 2 over 2 and 1 half. Now it's time for you to try. What are these sine and cosine values of theta as indicated here in radians? And of course the key is finding the triangle. What kind of triangle are you talking about? Alright, go ahead and click pause on this video and give it a shot. Number 47. Now the answer is negative radical 2 over 2. Now why is that? Well if we have 5 pi over 4 it's a little bit past halfway around the circle it's fourths of a radian and that tells you right away that that's a 45 degree angle right there and that means we have radical 2 over 2 legs. Now the cosine value is going to be this right here. Remember that's the horizontal component there and if we're going backwards that would be a negative. So negative radical 2 over 2. Number 48 it's positive radical 3 over 2. Again, why is that? Well, if we have thirds of a radian, the angle is going to be fairly steep going up, and that creates a 60 degree angle right there. 
all right? That's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if we're looking at sine, that's gonna be the long leg of this triangle, all right? So hopefully you've memorized this pattern. It's a radical three over two, and it's got to be positive going up. Number 49 is negative radical three over two. That's the cosine value. So again, if it's thirds or sixths, in this case, sixths, you are going to be looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So there you go. The cosine value has got to be this leg here, and we are going backwards on the x-axis, right? Negative radical 3 over 2. Number 50 is 3 halves pi radians. And if that's a complete 90 degree angle there, there really is no triangle to draw. All right? So if we're looking at the sine value, okay, down at the end of that radius right there, we are be we're going directly vertically down, and that's got to be negative 1. Okay, that's actually the radius of that unit circle, negative 1. All right, let's try two more. All right, here we go. Cosine of theta, if you have 2 thirds pi radians there, and the sine of theta, if you have pi over 6 radians there. Give it a shot. All right, here are the answers, and I hope you gave these a try. Let's see, negative one-half for problem 51. Now it asks for the cosine of theta, and theta is two-thirds pi radians, all right? What kind of triangle is that? Well, that is because we have thirds there, you know that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and this is a fairly large angle compared to that, so that's gotta be the 60 degree angle. All right, now cosine, of course, is the short leg of that triangle and we are going negatively. So negative one-half. Number 52, the sine. Okay, that's the up and down vertical component. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle looking like that. And if that's a 30 degree angle there, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And it's the short leg there, right there. So positive one-half. All right, well, I appreciate you watching this video and hope this has helped. You got to be able to kind of think between radians and degrees. And again, try to discover what kind of triangle. Is it a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90? Thanks for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard, 